All right, guys, it's Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm, and we are back in Starfield today on the mood of Kurtz to go over a ship build. But today, we're not doing a new ship build. We're going to go over the Imperator Mark II. While I enjoy building uh, all these ships and uh, trying new things and getting creative, um, I take all of those lessons and I go back to my home ship, the Imperator, which surprisingly enough turns out to be one of the most popular ships that I've built. And uh, I uh, do all the little upgrades that I can do uh, on this ship. And I have pushed this as far as I can with all the uh, trait points that you can get and uh, just sort of tweak the original Imperator into something that is really just a beastly in-game ship uh, that just can do everything. And that's really what I love about it. So always remember, guys, to uh, like, subscribe, and comment down below uh, so that I can continue to do these ship builds for you. But uh, let's go over the Imperator mark ii uh, this is a class c ship um, it's got a lot of cargo on it and uh, as you can see from the original design i sort of extended it out and added uh, a lot more decorative pieces as uh, well as the uh, turrets there to take advantage of uh, a lot of the turret uh, specs spec points that i have in the game uh, so let's head inside so you guys can see the layout. I do believe that the original Imperator, the uh, landing bay was in the rear of the ship. Uh, one of the changes I made was to move it up here and use the uh, Hope Tech uh, companion way that you see there to sort of create this really cool uh, front silhouette that I really, really like uh, from the original Imperator design. Uh, kind of stepped away from some of the uh, Nova pieces that were a bit chunkier and got a more slender and sleek design out of it. But anyway, let's head up into the Imperator. So you will come up into a companionway. Um, and this is why I moved the companionway to the front of the ship is so that when I, when I boarded, I could go straight up to the cockpit and uh, get into my seat. So we will head back uh, through a two by one, which I've got this set up as a computer banks uh, to buff my crew a little bit. Uh, this version of the ship, uh, I only think I can have three. Uh, that's all I need. I don't really carry that many crew with me. But if you follow some of the original design, you can get that all the way up to six, as high as eight. But I think six is the max that you can have in the game. But you will come out of this two by one and into a Nova Galactic 2x2. Two two. Uh, the original one had a, a cargo bay uh, adjacent to a living quarters. I took the cargo bay and turned it into an all-in-one berth. I really enjoy this all-in-one berth, and that was mostly because uh, the original version had a bathroom in a weird place, and uh, this one puts the bathroom right here. I kind of like the location of the bathroom. I know that seems strange, but from a role-playing perspective, it seemed kind of odd that some of the builds, uh, different ways that I was organizing this this ship as I was tweaking it, I, would, I wouldn't have a bathroom. And it felt weird to have all this living space and uh, nowhere to poop, even though you really don't do that in the game. It just, something about it made me want to have to have a bathroom in here. So that's why that's uh, an all-in-one berth and not a living quarters, because I kept cutting the bathroom off and I want a bathroom. But we will head a port side and it will bring us into a uh, lab here uh, so that we have access to the uh, pharmaceutical lab uh, workbench. And it will go forward into a companionway, which uh, in the original design, I had another uh, two by one down here, but uh, that was a little bit excessive, didn't need it. So I just kept the companionway so that I could connect to the docker there. And uh, if we head through, we'll head a, a, back through the uh, berth, through this sort of storage way, room. I kind of like the way this is also laid out with the uh, entertainment system. 
and it goes into a uh, captain's quarters uh, here. Very comfortable. Uh, this is this is where I live, so this is my home and where I like to sleep. Uh, but we'll continue on, and uh, we'll end up over here in the starboard arm, which is a uh, workshop, uh, another two by one, and there is uh, two companion ways up here. Uh, they really don't mean anything. They're just there to maintain the uh, symmetry and uh, silhouette and flow of the ship uh, from the starboard to the port side, so they match up just perfect. So that is the interior, and uh, we'll head up to the cockpit and take off uh, so that we can uh, see the Imperator Mark II, or the latest version of the Imperator. I'm sure that as time goes on, I will continue to tweak change and upgrade the ship uh, over and over and over again never quite satisfied with it Pressure holding. Take uh, part of the reason that I redid it was uh, I was able to unlock uh, higher generator power and uh, better grav drives due to my uh, talent points and uh, I have a lot of points Ooh, sunk into session. turrets and automated weapon systems so I wanted to take advantage of those as well with the Imperator. Um, as you can see, it is a Class C ship. Um, I just like Class C because you get to have lots and lots of cargo, uh, as well as big giant weapons and lots of HABs. So that's always my preferred ship. But I have built a few Class Bs, and I do have a Class A ship that I will be revealing soon that I really, really enjoy. So this is the Imperator. Mark II in flight. Um, very good looking ship. Very comfortable. Lots of amenities. Lots of cargo. Just about everything you could ever want in an in-game ship. A massive light, uh, light jump speed. Grav jump distance. Uh, very comfortable ship. Uh, this is definitely uh, a very in-game ship. You probably need to be well above level 50 to build all of this and have all of the parts. Um, but we will show you how to build the Imperator Mark II um, in the uh, ship builder here in a moment. Uh, I will be including a parts list and locations list in the description in this video. I've had a few reviewers request that I give a more detailed description uh, of the builds and give a parts list. And uh, so I'm gonna do that for you guys so that if you really want to build this you know exactly where you need to go and uh, I hate saying it so I think listing it in the description is probably best so that you guys can just copy and paste it and uh, you don't have to keep referring to my video uh, to find out where it is so and although I probably should do that that way you guys have to click on my video multiple times and I can I can buff that view count but no, we're going to do the delivery. We're going to do the uh, list down in the description for you guys. So uh, stay tuned. We will be right back in the shipbuilder, and we will go over the Imperator Mark II and how you can build it. All right, guys, we are back in the shipbuilder, and I have the Imperator Mark II pulled apart uh, down to at least the hab and gear layout because this is uh, the general shape that you're going to want to take you're going to have a hope tech companionway fuselage b right here in the front that is connected to your ng6 landing bay uh, the other banding bays will work here uh, this one just happens to sort of fit the overall theme and flow of the ship so that's the one i went with um, and behind that you will have your two by one um, and behind that, you will have your 2x2 two two and another 2x1. Um, you can use any halves you want, um, but this is the general layout. You could uh, do the 3x2 here if you really wanted to and turn this into living quarters. Um, but this is the uh, basic layout. And so to the uh, starboard side, you will have uh, a cross passage uh, on either side as well uh, and the port side here as well. Um, I recommend using the Nova cross passages here um, because they weigh four mass and the Hope Tech ones are 14. And uh, we will be building down to about the last five mass 
that this ship is capable of carrying. So you can use the Hope Tech ones here, but you will have to trim something somewhere off of uh, the ship here. Um, but from those ha uh, cross passages, you will go into another two by one. I'm using Hope Tech. Uh, I like theirs. Uh, workshops and science labs better than I do the Nova Galactic living quarters. Um, and they match more than Tayo does because uh, they both sort of use gunmetal blue in their design so they flow a little bit better. However, up here in the front, I have two Tayo companionway or storerooms. However you look at it, on the bottom I have the A um, and on the top I went with the D. Um, the only reason I went with D is, as you can see, uh, the D has a stripe. And uh, I just thought that that looked better uh, with the uh, paint job. And that is mirrored over here as well with two companion ways. Uh, you go with Tayo here because it just looks better on the front of the ship with uh, all of the smoother edges that you sort of see. But you could use um, any companion way storeroom that you want. It does not really affect the ship all that much. I just care about the look as much as I do any of the utility. Um, and the reason you have the companion wings, obviously, is so that you can put your 100 DP, a slim docker from Dimos, so that you can keep that on the outside edge of your ship. As anybody who's been building ships for any amount of time can tell you, there's nothing more frustrating than that stupid error message that your docker needs to be on the outside edge of your ship. So this is the one way you can do it with some certainty. Um, underneath, we are going to have a lot of landing gears. Um, you will need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine of the pinpoint 4G landing gears from Tayo, as well as two Aculander 11 landing gears from Stroud Eklund. Um, and this is the bare minimum you can have. I am one point over my lander thrust requirements. I take one of these off and it goes red. So um, alternatively, you don't need all of these because you can use the Nova Galactic ones down the center um, if you don't care about the smoother lines and just want better lander thrust. I, however, uh, care too much about making sure that all of my landing gears are clean, they match, and are all symmetrical. So those are the landing gears that you will need to get this started. Um, so moving along, uh, we do have a Commander 500 bridge from Hope Tech that will attach directly to the front. Very good cockpit, probably my favorite cockpit uh, right next to the Viking cockpit from Stroud, Stroud Eklund. Um, and that's mostly because I like to fly in the cockpit view. Um, so if you don't really care about the cockpit view, uh, you could definitely use any cockpit that you want here with the exception of the Magellan, uh, no, the Magellan and uh, the Cabot bridges from uh, Nova Galactic. But I'm fairly certain I have fiddled with just about every forward-facing uh, cockpit here, and they all work uh, except for the really crappy one that doesn't let you put anything underneath it is usually the one where the hang-up is. So we will then move to the cargo. Cargo is pretty simple. There are five of these 30T hauler cargo holds from Sextant Systems. And uh, two will go here, just like there will be two that go here. And then one that will go underneath, just like that, right behind your landing gear. And there'll be another one on this side. And then in the rear, you will have two of these 100 cm ballast cargo holds that go on the bottom right behind your gears here on either side of the arm. And then you're going to have two of these DA Gamma uh, 
1020 cargo holds from Panopits, I guess. And they go right in the middle, just like you see there. And, oops. And that, of course, is mirrored over here as well. And that is your cargo. It will give you a base cargo of 7,420, um, which is quite a lot for a ship of this size with this many halves. So it's pretty good. I have a fully upgraded uh, cargo talent, and so mine ends up being like 82 or 8,400 total uh, with all the bonuses. Um, so moving along, we're going to start putting on some of these uh, decorative pieces. We've got two Nova braking engines that are going to go right there in between, uh, the right in front of the cross passage, uh, just like you see there. And then I have some Demos wing C's that go right along the outside of the ship that you see here, just like this. And then here is where we're going to use these uh, Stroud cap uh, port four bottoms and tops. They go uh, up against your landing gear, and then the top one goes right up against your uh, cargo hold, like you see there. And it creates a really, I think, really cool, really fun profile uh, here in the front that sort of breaks up the uh, flow from the front and into the main body of the ship. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add our grav drive and our reactor. Your grav drive goes right at the very back, like you see here, between these two things, and your reactor goes down and on top of this uh, back landing gear that you see sort of jutting out right here. Um, and then what you will do is you'll take this shield. I was able to unlock this shield. It's, uh, I think it's the most powerful shield in the game that you can get. And uh, it goes right in front of your generator because we want to hide that bad boy because we like shields, but they're always weird and go in weird places and sort of break up the way your ship looks. So I try to hide them when I can, if I can get away with it. And that's what we've done here. Uh, so we'll keep going. Uh, we have our uh, gas tanks here. These are Titan 450 helium three tanks from Nautilus. Uh, they're going to go uh, right here in front of your uh, shield that you see here. Uh, I just happen to like these two tanks, uh, these tanks, because of the way they color. Uh, they, when you put a paint job on these tanks, they look really good and sort of match the color motif uh, of your ship. Uh, as for some of the other tanks tend to be less forgiving in that department and stay silver or, or stay black or whatever color it is that they have. And that's why I really like these ones. And they don't seem to, to have really any major impact uh, on your uh, grav jump range, at least in this build. Um, but we also have a two Tayo braking engines that we will be attaching to the front of each of the, uh, of the starboard and port arms that you see here. So we'll go over and we'll do the winglets. Um, the winglets are three of these Nova cowlings with the uh, center one flipped with the snap point to the outside. And it has a thruster array on it. And then I have three Jisaku NDRF rapid rail guns. Um, and they will attach just like you see here to the sides. Uh, it, it'll snap right here. It won't snap here in the front but you will need to snap it there. And then it is mirrored on the uh, starboard side, but I instead have three PBO 300 auto alpha turrets, one of the best uh, auto turrets in the game. Very powerful, very low resources, and lots of fun to see just shooting. So now we'll get to the engine parts. Um, here on each of the uh, arms of the ship, I have a Nova Cowling 2LF with a Vanguard Obliterator auto projector attached to the top and attached to the front of one of six SAL 6830 engines. And they go right like you see there, attaching to each one of the arms. We do have a couple of decorative pieces 
I'm going to put one there on the generator, and then we're going to put one right there on the, uh, oh no, that's not where that one goes. We're messing things up, Ozzy. Um, we're actually going to put this uh, little ditty together up there. This is a Stroud mid-bracer with two Demos Wing D uh, starboard and port afts you see there, and it attaches to the... Uh, back of your grav drive and then these winglets here the demos wing a's will attach going forward just like you see like this and so we're going to do the engines here and the way we do these engines is we're going to do a little bit of trickery um, you will put this first engine uh, down on the bottom attached to the cargo hold and if you duplicate it just like that and don't move you can attach the second one um, just like that and you can have two engines sort of occupying the same space uh, like you see there and we'll do that again to get our engine count maxed out right there I, I tried a lot of ways to fiddle with getting this engine up and being completely vanilla but no matter how many different ways I did it it really just kind of ruined the profile of the ship because it looks so good you know just that smooth profile from the back going all the way to the engines that I think it's really worth sacrificing a full vanilla build for that uh, that one really nice silhouette is just I think it's worth it so we're gonna add these pieces here they're just decorative that is a Demos spine a4 going into a Demos spine d4 and then of course I have two of those that nose B afts just really simple easy decorative pieces to sort of cover up the ugly that we really don't want to see and so now we will add the first of the two uh, Nova Cowling 2L TFs the first one will go just like that attaching to your grav drive and it will hide your uh, little shield underneath there and go right over the top of those really nice gas tanks and since I decided to cheat with the engines I decided to go ahead and cheat with the Nova Cowling as well so what you're going to want to do is transform this Nova Cowling into the 2L TMs. But then if you highlight it again and you uh, hit next variant, it will bring this variant up, uh, the Nova Cowling 2L TF, and you can set it. And it creates a really nice smooth transition from that Hope Tech Companionway up into the Nova Cowling that just sort of continues on up and flows into the ship like you see there. And that is how you will build the Imperator Mark II for yourself. Um, again, I will leave a parts list. I will post a parts list, parts, pff, parts list in the description if you guys want to build it and the locations of the parts that you can get. About 90% of the ship can be bought at your basic, uh, at the basic shipyard. Uh, at your base or in a new Atlantis but there are a couple of pieces that you have to go to the dealers to get so I will put that in the list for you guys I want to thank you all for coming along and uh, checking out my Imperator Mark II video I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time on the Gamers Grim.